So, as most of you know, I'm struggling with my health, with Grandpa's health, with everything in general. I'm going to try and make this short and sweet. <clears throat> um, that's basically all I want to give you on the update tonight, and I'm sorry that it's short, but when you're feeling under the weather, the last thing you want to do is really sit here and keep going over the same stuff that happened all day long. Uh, with no meals on wheels, of course, that meant I had to cook his dinner, but he didn't get up until late on my last break, and I had to help him get up, and it was just one of those days, but, you know, and so did my mom. She was on my, on the, on my cell phone, and she was like, come on, get up, get up, get up, otherwise I'm going to take you to the walk-in clinic, you know, so, uh, I don't know if it's depression we're going through, or if it's because of the holidays, or what, but lately he wants to sleep in really late, and it bugs me. Okay, so let's go back to uh, my artwork today. I did some of that to try and calm my nerves. My stomach's been upset. It's been a bad day. If you can't tell, I've been wanting to cry. I did cry during Yellowstone. That's why I, I took that picture. I heat lifted not only cheer me up, but cheer everybody else up out there. See If you see my Instagram, my Facebook, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I got some good pictures of Rip. I love that man. Um, anyway... Uh, let's go ahead and hit this Woman's World, December 6, 2021, second half of this, which I'm planning on finishing this book up tonight so we can go right in to the next Woman's World because I'll probably get the new Woman's World sometime this week and I just don't have enough time on my plate to do everything. Okay, Ask America's Ultimate Experts. Help me reconnect with loved ones. As wonderful as the holiday gatherings can be, getting back in the social swing of things can pose challenges, and here's how to conquer them. Feel closer. Calm any jitters. I'm just going to read off the highlights. You're going to read the article. Meet and greet. Spark deep conversation. Repair rifts. Start with your heart. Begin with the healing. It's okay not to talk. And I have an expert panel, panel, panel of uh, people here. Patty Wood, the MA, Joshua Coleman, the PhD, and Allison McElroy, the LMFT. And I want you to read the book, so I'm just going to lightly skip over some of these and just highlight some. And as I said before, I'm not feeling well, so please forgive me. Um, your organized home, organize your fridge fast. If your fridge was even more stuffed, your turkey over your Thanksgiving, our experts have the will help you stow your chilled ingredients, leftovers, festive fare, and space to spare. Preserve and produce with clear containers. Keep leftovers and reach with a lazy Susan. Corral condiments with an egg carton. Stash cups and cans in a magazine file. Free up freezer space with wine box dividers. Okay, well that's interesting. We have a man at the pharmacy here talking with the pharmacist it says the cost of the medication is causing the dizziness seven days of inspiration take one a day and feel great all week day one wonderful beautiful filled with potential that's you day two succeed you can you do you will day three you have more strength than you'll ever need day four root for yourself too day five the sun moon stars keep shining like you do day six positive thinking beats overthinking every time Day seven, you count. Okay, a moment for you, and it's a good thing I got some water in here. He's got a high of 78 in the house tonight, and it's driving me nuts. Oh, you're someone to be grateful for. You might not think of yourself as someone who makes people think, thank goodness for you, but you are, and they do, and you have every reason to. Every day, in so many ways, you're a positive force in the world. Always have been, always will be, just be, just by replacing, just by being irreplaceable you. Finding love on the tracks, a five minute romance, and we all know that's exactly how long love lasts. Zena had given up on the idea of romance until the handsome stranger, Clint, changed everything. Last spring, Zena's relationship with Mike capsized, stoking an ambi ambition to return to her rumpled little hometown. She took a position in the history department at a college where her father was retiring. Then she told Mike and Chicago goodbye. This morning in the cold winter air, Zena hiked the railroad tracks which skirted the bluffs on the river's edge of the town. As a child, she'd hopped from tie to tie on them, her tiny hand gripping her father's while 
Vern Powers wove stories that fueled Zena's zest for the railroad and the local history. Now here she was again, alone, as the tiny snowflakes swirled all around her, or so she thought. If only we hobos had a cauldron of mulligan stew, a deep masculine voice bubbled from behind her. We could sit in the tall weeds and eat out of tin cans. Zena whirled, startled by the stranger's sudden approach. Her tone snapped like a twig. Oh my, you scared me. The man was apologetic, but handsome. Sorry, I just saw a fellow railroad wanderer and thought, I recognize you, Zena interrupted, her memory flashing as her heart fluttered. His solid, muscular frame fantastically fleshed out his flannel shirt and faded jeans, all it she'd seen before. You're no hobo. You're that new editor at the newspaper. You make that sound worse than being a hobo, he said, offering his hand, Clint Drucker. Zena's slender fingers hesitantly slid again inside his warm, soft grip. Z. He cut her off. You're Zena Powers. She withdrew her hand, but the fluttering remained. You're a mind reader, too. Reporters have it, Clint said. Was that a blush blooming over his face? I go overboard sometimes putting faces with names. But how did you know my name? Zena asked. He sat down on the rail and his legs stretched out in the clods of the rock. I covered your faculty meet and greet in August. Zena laughed, her auburn curl shaking. You found that newsworthy? Clint shrugged. We have to print something. The dewdrop shimmer dancing in his blue eyes rendered Zena breathless. Small town history excites me. If anyone could teach me about this place, it would be you. Smiling, she said, you tracked me down on a Sunday morning to tell me that. Not at all, he argued. You're not like the one who enjoys a winter hike. Uh-huh. Zena winked teasingly. You should take my Wednesday evening class. No can do. I work late Wednesdays. He raised his eyes to hers. Maybe we can go for a coffee instead on Friday. Forward, Zena thought, a thrill running through her. She drew deep in a breath and ventured. Actually, I've been wanting to tackle my dad's mulligan stew recipe. Care to give it a try with me? Really? He squinted at her. I thought mulligan stew was a myth. A myth, she whooped. You have to learn about the hobos, but you'll have to settle for dinnerware. I'm out of tin cans. His handsome face crinkled with delight. When and where does this dinner and history lecture take place? Zena answered between rapping heartbeats, Friday night at my house. Flint nodded knowingly. Your childhood home on Juniper Street? Your knowledge of me is unnerving. With guilty admission, he said, I met your father last spring. He mentioned you were coming home to live in the family house when they moved south. Zena perched next to Clint, their arms brushed just enough to send a shiver of pleasure up her spine. She told him then that she left 20 years ago to seek a bigger life in the city. She mentioned Mike, which prompted Clint to tell her about his job at St. Louis newspaper and how, after his divorce, he wanted a new start. Looks like my parents' retirement turned out to be a real game changer for me, she said, a hopeful note in her tone. Maybe for the both of us, Clint said. The following Friday at the house on Juniper Street, Clint was introduced to Mulligan Stew. In the evening, the couple wandered along the tracks, trailing the drooping sun. After they walked for some time, Clint offered Zena his hand. She took it without reservation, thinking about those childhood walks with her father. Just then, the snow began to fall. Perhaps now, she would continue her journey with a new man in her life. Together, they might even build a history, Wendell Potter. Okay, so since we missed this horoscope... I'm going to skip it because I want to get to the new horoscope. And I apologize, people, that we missed it. But life and everything has not been easy lately, and I hope you understand. You deserve good things. More happiness is ahead. It's true that sometimes the going can get rough, but hard times never are here to stay. Trouble passes. Prayers are answered. Joy returns. And when you hope you, and you do, your dreams absolutely will come true. And that's not all. You receive blessings, and you'll never even expect it, because life is so good. Love and laughter. We have a beautiful four-year-old named Orion. It's perfect for recipes, and she's busy in her great-grandmother's kitchen, or great-great-aunt's kitchen, I should say, because it's submitted by her great-great-aunt, Claudette Lambert from Ontario. We have a little maestro here. Time for my concerto, and his name is Reed, and he is handsome. He's got a little wave going on in that hair. He's nine months old, submitted by grandmother Christine Brewer in New York. We've got a dog, and it looks like he's in a hoodie. It says, Positively Cozy, submitted by Chance Moss out of Florida. Precious Peanut, and she is two months old. Her name's Alina. She's got a beautiful blue headband with a little denim shirt on. 
submitted by Mother Jessica White from Virginia. A little Caden, 11 months old, it says, come and get me, and a beautiful little yellow shirt and yellow pants, and he's 11 months, submitted by Grandmother Angela Payne from South Carolina. And it says, no gesture is too small when done with gratitude, Oprah Winfrey. We got a couple of cartoons here. One where the mom is reading and the dog is looking at her like, what are you doing? 23 times. How many times did you glance to see how your hair looked during the Zoom meeting? And then we have two women at the gym. It says, yeah, I get a real workout with exercise equipment. I'm constantly moving it out of my way. And that is all I'm going to cover from the December 6, 2021 Woman's World. We covered it in two videos. Thank God. Again, I'm losing my voice. But you know me. If I do one video, I'm going to do two. So don't go anywhere.